Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Back at it again. Um, all right, so listen, I thought, you know, I have a, a, a video that talks about a get home bag that you can create and put together yourself, bug out bag that you can kind of create and put together yourself, the family of four bug out bag, individual get home bag. So if you're out and about, something were to happen, right? Electromagnetic pause, all vehicles stop working, your vehicle breaks down, there's some type of attack, whatever, you need to get home to your family. I have a video about how to put that together. But let's just imagine you don't have time for that. You're not interested in that. You're not particularly keen on wanting to buy the individual items and put it together. And so I thought I would start a small series that talks about some of the best or pre-built get home bags slash bug out bags you can buy on the market. So this is the Rhino Ready Companion Bag. Uh, I got the all blackout edition. They make it in a, they have a color, like an original edition. So like on the original edition, these straps in the front here would be like more of an orange color and the side Molly attachments on the side here, these would be an, an, an orange color as well, which I don't know if that's particularly a good idea in a bug out situation. Maybe it's an, it's an okay idea in a get home bag, but if it's a bug out, and if it's some type of situation where there's a lot of people and they're all trying to survive and escape, you may not want that. So it's made by a company called Rhino Ready. You know, I think they started this with like a jump starter type campaign in 2020. But it, it's a nice looking bag. Uh, we can start with that if we want to just start with the comparisons and, you know, but let's dig into it. Let's figure out some more about this bag. I mean, we got a pretty robust bag here. I got the all black edition like we talked about earlier. There is an edition that has the orange straps and I guess the orange webbing on the side. I will prefer to get the all blackout edition. Two reasons. One, uh, it's less likely that um, I'm going to lose this bag in like some snow. I live in Texas. So if there's enough snow or or, you know, that I can't find this bag, then we got a problem. Secondly, if we're in a bug out situation versus a get home situation, I don't think I want my bag super identifiable as, you know, reflective. So I would prefer to get the nine, the black, uh, the, the totally blacked out one. But if you're gonna be buying this bag more as a get home bag, not really bug out, they, they, they coined this bag a 72 hour survival bag for companions for two different people. You know, but if it's going to be more of a get home bag, then maybe you want to get the one that's orange so you're easily identifiable when you're walking on the road or something like that. Has a side um, Molly system on the side, so if you want to add some attachments, some carabiners, all that good stuff. Same thing in the front here. You can cinch down an E tool if you want to cinch down a uh, maybe like a, a Gerber, uh, a machete or something like that. Has a front pocket, feels pretty robust in the front. Has a side pocket on the side, I assume would be for a water bottle, something like that. Uh, I will say this, these shoulder straps are kind of, I mean, they're okay. There's better shoulder straps that you can purchase um, if you do your own bag. The bag that I've had for 10 years, I mean, the straps are more robust than this one. It does have like the moisture wicking type material so that your, as your shoulders sweat, right? It, We'll kind of absorb that a little bit. There's actually a little bit of padding on the back as well. Uh, has the waist straps, so that's you know pretty good. This all has a little chest strap as well. Has a little bit more uh, areas where you can clip on flashlights, maybe some pepper gel, a uh, a flat um, tools like that, maybe a multi tool or something like that. Here, these aren't really that robust uh, to cinch this down a little bit. These feel like if I were to, if I loaded this bag up and I, you know, when you load a bag up and you prepare to ruck and you lean forward and you cinch down real hard on a bag, I feel like these just may not fully make the cut, but you know, you never know. I guess some modifications I would do to the outside of this bag is to add an emergency whistle. You have a few more little grommets here if you wanna add some items. Uh, so four of those, maybe six, is there one at the bottom? Yeah, there's two more at the bottom, so it's pretty nice. It also comes with this bandana. I mean, this bandana is kind of robust. Uh, so this bandana just talks about, you know, you know, it, it's a survival bandana. So obviously you can wear it, but it has just a few key pointers about shelter, water, first aid. It has the company's logo in the middle. They have a, 
you know, pretty simple logo, but it's very pronounced. Communication, wounds, how to address wounds, bites and stings, diarrhea, animals, food, fire. So it's not a bad little bandana. But let's get into the bag itself. So, pretty nice strap up here at the top before I even open the bag. I mean, the strap is, I would say the strap is decent for carrying. You don't have to worry about it ripping and breaking on you. So one thing that drew me to this bag to review for you guys is it has very big, detailed, you know, easy to identify sections, um, warmth, uh, sight and air, tools, lights, communication, food and water and first aid. So, you know, if you don't want to have to necessarily put together your own kit, they kind of just make it so it's nice and big and bright. Also, if you use this kit, imagine you use this kit for camping instead of using it for bug out or for an emergency, you know where to replenish your items, right? So that's 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 not a bad thing. And sweet sound of Velcro. Uh, each of the uh, sections are removable, so you can take it out. If you need to go down the trail to help somebody else, or if you just need to bring that one item with you, maybe you're going to barter a little bit and check out my uh, SHTF uh, portable bartering kit. But maybe you just want to barter a little bit and you don't want somebody to know you have a whole bag. You just take a couple of one section out, walk down the trail. Let's get into the warm section. The warm section is supposed to have two pairs of gloves, two raincoats, two blankets, some warmers and a tent. So first off, these gloves these are pretty robust i'm not gonna lie to you i mean they're they're line they're inner line they feel warm I, I mean they feel like you can do a little bit of work in it i don't know if you're gonna have the dexterity to like grab nuts and bolts and do engine work and stuff like that but if you need to change like a tire you need to slap these bad boys on they feel like they'll be pretty warm these blankets um they are okay i would give these two steps above the Kind of those emergency blankets that you find on Amazon. These are more reusable. Those blankets tear a lot easier. These feel a little bit more robust than those blankets you would find on Amazon. So, you know, I feel like these actually might be reusable. They purport them to be reusable. I'll give them a, give them a few points for that. Um, also, some warmers. Now, these things to me are completely useless. Hand warmers, body warmers, stuff like that. Uh, I just, I'm just not a big fan of them. I feel like they're giving you, I guess they'll give you a little bit of warmth. And if you're in an environment where you really could use them, I guess. But I guess if you, if you activate these and put them, uh, maybe put them against your kidneys and let your blood flow through them. But I just, I just, I would personally prefer to layer up, put on warming layers and try to use some warmers because they're temporary. And I don't want to put my body through an up and down, up and down, up and down warming sensation. But, you know, they throw them in there. Okay, these raincoats. I would say these raincoats. Let me see. These things feel. Okay. These are actually kind of nice. These are some nice little raincoats here. Uh, they're a step above a poncho. I'm not pulling them all the way out because I don't feel like refolding them. But they feel a step above the poncho like you would get on a, um, you know, from Amazon or something like that. These these feel pretty good. All right, give them, give them some credit for that. But just looking at this tent, though, I got to give you a 4 out of 10 for this tent. This is a two-person tent. This thing feels complete trash. I mean... A, not only does it feel kind of, I mean, I guess it would get the job done for keeping the wind out, but I mean, where, I don't see any tie, I, they give you a little bit of like nylon to use to tie it up one step below like 550 cord, but I'm used to like nice size grommet hose on a tent. Even, even if I, even if they would have just provided me with two heavy duty tarps, I think I could have made do better than this tent i mean i guess these tie downs in this tent it will work out but i can't imagine it being that robust 
That's it for the warmth bag. Uh, I think for the warmth bag, I probably would have added some, uh, you know, some beanies or something. I mean, I, I think I would have preferred to have beanies than having these warming, warmth things or whatever the heck these things are. It's hand warmers. There we go. Couldn't think of the word. Hand warmers. All right, so now we kind of transition to the the sight and air. Let's see goggles and mask. So they give you two pairs, and I'm not gonna. Wow, really? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I thought they would give you more high speed masks than this. I mean, these are the N95 masks, but these aren't really reusable. You can't really wash them. But they are N95 masks, but they're not gonna really be good. I don't know. I mean, if I wanted to use these in like a an environment where there's gas, it's kind of pointless. But I guess they're gonna be good for coronavirus. But I would think your mask would be a little bit more robust than that. But they're gonna filter out 95% of the toxins, i.e., N95. These goggles, though, these are a step above. These are pretty nice. Some nice little goggles here. I have to test this out, but I th hopefully there's not a gap right here. At the nose portion the purpose of these goggles is to keep whatever's in the air away from your eyes kind of like swimming goggles they do cinch down on the side but if there's a gap at the nose then there's just some pretty goggles but we'll see we'll see they look pretty cool they're they're more robust than the uh the sunglasses i have in my kit i will give them that all right but so i guess the sight section I would probably supplement this with some regular uh, sunglasses, some polarized sunglasses that aren't gonna be so high speed. These are kind of like high speed, low drag goggles here. Nice little water bottle. So yeah, water bottle seems like it to get the job done. It's not bad at all. So moving on to the tools. The tools plus nav. Tools plus nav, huh, okay. Well, it says you're supposed to get a fire starter, multi-tool, uh, some zip ties, a compass, a knife, tape, and a pen. Okay, good. Well, here we see the zip ties. These are pretty robust. It's pretty nice. They're two different colors, which is a good thing. That way, you know, if you have something marked, if you're putting these on two different areas, you need to mark you know, for what? That's a good idea. It's pretty nice. Let's see what else we got in here. There's the... All right, so it looks like some uh, duct tape and some signal tape. Looks like two by, I don't know how much duct tape is in there. I guess that's that's a lot. It's not a, not a horrible amount of duct tape. And a little bit of signal tape as well. So you get a um, you get a pad, some grid paper lines, type lines on here, and uh, has their logo on the front. This is not this is not right in the rain type paper, so be careful writing on that. You do get a basic compass. <laughs> when I say basic, I mean like. This is a basic compass. The base of it is plastic. I mean, the compass is technically working. This is north behind me. Uh, pointing towards me is north, so it's technically working. But you can't shoot an azimuth with this thing. I guess, I mean, it's pretty, it's robust. It has measurements on the side, millimeters and inches. It has a nice little string so you can keep it around your wrist while you're walking. And it has a decent little bag. I will say, uh, attaching this is going to be not as easy as a, a, most of these type of bags most of these bags attach to the bag this wants you to attach the bag to it so yeah you know some nice 550 cord i'll give them that it has a nice little tie for it as well all right so here we have the multi-tool all right, this multi-tool is not horrible. It's a nice little multi-tool. You know, the only issue I have with so far with a lot of their stuff 
is they're they're freaking branding the mess out of it, man. I mean, this thing here is branded with Rhino, uh, but I mean, it has pliers in it. I see some knives and a rasp. I see a Phillips head, slotted screwdriver, another knife, a small little hacksaw. I mean, it seems to get the job done. Uh, you know, can opener has a little knife in there. I guess if you don't own a multi-tool, this is going to be a nice win for you. Nice little multi-tool. Feels, feels pretty sturdy. I'm not going to say it's trash. It's pretty good. Here, this is, okay, so they give you an included knife. Has a nice little finger guard to it. So if you need to do a little bit of self-protection. Kind of wish the knife had a little bit longer extended finger uh, protection on this side. Because if you're trying to like imagine you're holding a, uh, you know, so imagine this is a, a branch or a stick and you're trying to sharpen it. I mean, it'd be nice if you had a little bit more on the other side. And okay, this is going to need to be sharpened just fyi if you get this thing out of the bag it needs to be sharpened no my knives normally if i run my finger over that i'm checking my finger to see if it's bleeding it is not um what is this okay so they also give you a, a magnesium ferro rod so you can take this ferro rod along with the, the knife and try to start a fire but the knife is so trash that uh good luck with that i don't see any fire starting material like they don't give you anything to actually attempt to start a fire but a fixed blade the handle's not very robust it doesn't like have a uh it'd be nicer if it had like a glass breaker on this side so you could leave it in its sheath see a lot of fixed blades that you buy i can leave a link below uh, but if you leave a lot of fixed blades in their sheath, you can take it and use it as a glass breaker. You can also use a lot of fixed blades as a hammer. This doesn't let you do any of those. I would give this blade probably a three out of 10. Uh, once it's sharpened up, maybe to be a six, but come out the bag is pretty trash. Here, it's a nice robust system to attach it to. You know, if you have a size system on your thigh or your pants, you know, you can attach this to a bag. It's not bad. The tool system. Eh, I think I would have preferred a few more tools, um, but I mean, if you don't have anything, this would be a, this is a decent little setup. If you have nothing at all, when it comes to a bag with tools in it, we move on to the other side of the bag here. All right. So apparently in the lights and comms, let's see what we get in here. So, okay. This is a little bit, uh, a little deception. It has two different openings right but there's no divider on the inside so it's really no point to open one side is because if i guess you would imagine if you're opening this side you're grabbing a light or if you're opening this side you're grabbing comms that's not the case at all it's just one big pouch all right so inside here what is this okay it's a rechargeable flashlight it has five modes high low medium strobe and SOS it tells you to charge you before you use it. Okay. So that this flashlight breaks my first rule of flashlights, which is all your flashlights should be either double a or triple a. This is a lithium ion, uh, 2200. It is, I mean, it, it's decent. You can zoom in and Make produce the light a little bit smaller, zoom out a little bit. Uh, it has a light on the side to let you know that it's lit, I guess. I mean, okay. Here, the, all right, I have to kind of knock you for this. We're in 2021, guys. This is a, a micro USB charger. I don't know if you can see that. But you guys got to get with the USB type C. Uh, that's where everybody's transitioning to all my chargers, USB type C. If I am going to keep something like this in my bag, breaking my own rule for charging, I mean, get with the times, y'all. But, you know, it is what it is. Comes with its own little pouch. I wish it came with a uh, some type of lanyard or something, but you can at least clip it to your uh, hat or something like that. 
has a charging cord. You get two chem lights. I guess you can tie these to some 550 cord and spin it around in a circle and create like an emergency signal. Uh, you get a headlamp. All right, so this headlamp follows my rule. This headlamp apparently uses some triple A batteries. It makes, makes me feel a little bit better about that. I'm not sure about the lumens of this thing. It does not feel robust whatsoever. It is definitely plastic all around. I mean, you can definitely get you a nice headlamp from like Columbia. It does articulate a little bit. So if you need to articulate downwards and I guess it's a tighten around your head. All weather matches. All right, so these are all weather matches. Uh, Okay, I guess my issue with this is the strikers on the outside. It does kind of have a little extra striker strip just in case the one on the outside is no longer effective. I guess I would have been, I would have felt better if there was something covering the entire outside and covering the striker part, but you get a nice amount of matches. They smell horrible, just so you know, they're pretty decent when they smell really bad. So these are probably waterproof. You can submerge these in water and still use them. Okay, well, here's a radio flashlight. So if you don't own a hand crank uh, emergency radio. They do give you one of those. This is not horrible. Uh, so it has the emergency frequency. It has FM, it has AM on off. It's completely dead, it needs to be charged. So let's see the charger port, same charger port. So it has a micro USB charger port. It does not have a cord in here. So I guess they're assuming you're gonna use the cord that they gave you for the flashlight on this it has solar charging here at the top it has a flashlight on the side I see this this hole here I'm hoping you can supplement this with some batteries because you know yeah it's nice to have the lithium ion battery but nah, negative Ghost Rider so yeah I mean I would prefer to have an emergency radio that uses Maybe has an extra port where you can put AA or AAA batteries in it and it has a lithium ion battery inside. This one is not that. And it does come with its own cord, okay. So I thought they were expecting to use the same cord. Okay, so food and water. Three day survival. I'm a, this just does not feel like three days worth of water. This doesn't feel like three days worth of water, guys. I'm, I mean, if, if you are trying to get home, there's two people. My assumption is you need a gallon a person a day. They got a bunch of this emergency water satchels. You've seen this in some of my other videos. This stuff is good for five years. But they give you, let's see, three. I mean, six nine ten i mean they give you ten of these pouches for two people for three days that's trash I, that this is not yeah it's not gonna make the cut um they do give you a bladder and a filtration system so that you can uh gather your own water and drink directly from these bladders and they give you a little uh, holder for that. It's not very robust at all. This holder is not good at all. Not good holder at all. They also give you a little bit of instructions on how to use this thing. It's pretty standard though. I don't even know how big these bladders are. I'm assuming they're like 24 ounce bladders or something like that. But I mean, they're expecting you, if you're traveling for three days, if they give you 10 pouches. I think I would have preferred to have more pouches and then they give you this. I, I'm just not a fan of these things. These things are, I mean, these are high caloric emergency rations. Uh, a lot of people use these and you're supposed to ration them up, but there's remote, more robust options out there. Uh, you'd be better off buying some MREs and compressing them down. Like you can probably make, you know, uh, Two, RM, two MREs per person per day work. 
So maybe have six MREs and you just kind of break those up. This is, I mean, this is going to get you what you need, but I can imagine that this is going to also expand upon your dehydration. I'm just not a big fan of those. So uh, apparently there's supposed to be water tablets in here as well. I guess it was in here. Yeah, that's just not good. Rhino, I got to hit you on that, man. Like, I would have preferred to have, you know, maybe some more water pouches and maybe water tablets. Because then I can take that canteen, that pretty, it's pretty sweet canteen you give me, right? And freaking drop some water tablets in there and freaking go to town on way more water than this filtration. So just, I don't know, man. I'm, a, uh, I'm not a big fan of the the food and water section. All right, so first aid. See, it's nice and red, so you kind of know this is a first aid. It has a little symbol on the front, gives you an indicator. All right, so I'm seeing some medical scissors. I'm seeing some cold presses and some antiseptic wipes. I mean, unless these are gloves. Gloves should be like one of the top things Okay, so there are some gloves in here. These are gloves. Good to go. At least they're not making you dig to find the gloves if you're trying to do some type of servicing or something like that. So that's good. I mean, this could be more robust. They do leave you a little bit of empty pouches here if you want to add some items. They have a little pamphlet in here. I'm assuming that's explaining what's in here. There's a bunch of gauze and there is some bandages in here. Some trauma pads, some more trauma pads, more guys. Yeah, um, this is pretty basic. I think I would have preferred to have some stuff to help with, um, you know, maybe, maybe can I get one tourniquet? Yeah, this is, this is going to get the job done for the super basics. There's nothing in here to really do much of anything else on the trail, but it's going to give you the basics, so. All right, well, that seems to be about it. This thing's $399. I mean, the bag is bonded. It is waterproof. I just, I don't know, man. The bag itself is, it's okay. I'm a, I just don't imagine that this is a bag that you're gonna be able to throw in water and use to float. They don't even advertise that on their website. If you just really like the bag, you can buy the bag on their website and you can actually buy the compartments and you can fill it up yourself. Would I recommend buying this? I would give it a yes, but I would not use this for bugging out. I would only use this bag for getting home. As a get home bag, I guess I would use it. I mean, if it's an EMP or some type of other attack and you're gonna be inside of like an office building waiting for like dust to clear <clears throat> for like two weeks, <clears throat> this bag isn't robust enough for that. You know, you can't even really add items to it to make it a longer get home bag. Uh, I definitely would not use this as a bug out as is. I would have to supplement it. We will be comparing that bag with the Uncharted Supply Company's bag. We'll be doing a direct comparison. First, I'm gonna do a, uh, a review of the Uncharted Supply Company's. They have a similar two companion bag and just see which one is more robust. So keep your eyes out for that. I thank you for once again coming back to the channel. If you're not already a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. On your way to leaving a comment, hit the like button. That helps out the channel. We got more things to come. I'm glad that you came back. In the meantime, we'll speak soon.